I've had a few questions on the uh, Salami Slapper Sorcedon. That is my boy Gorknack over here. Okay. 424. Uh, yeah. The 424 health left. Gotta do a little a little crit. So we can make sure that we kill our ghoul friend here for our bloodlust elixir. The full extra action. Okay. Uh we martial exertion. And then we start salami slapping. Let's go. Oh yeah. All crit. Salami slapped. They're gonna tell stories of the salami slapper himself. <laughs> oh my god. Let's go. Yes! <laughs> Gorknack, the salami slapper himself. 400 and. What was that? 420 damage by salami alone. Fantastic. Well done, Gorknack. Uh, so I thought I'd just sort of clear them up and explain the build and how I'm doing all the attacks I'm doing, the spell slots and all that, right? So first and foremost, he's a 6th level Paladin, 6th level Sorcerer. Um, point being, 6th levels in Paladin gives you the 2nd level ability of Paladin, which allows you to convert your spell slots into extra damage on attack rolls. So that's your Divine Smites. 5th uh, level uh, in Paladin gives you your extra attack on an action. So you take an action for attacking instead of doing 1, you do 2, uh, which is common on most of the martial classes. That allows you obviously to double up on the, you know, on your attacks there by hitting more often and doing a lot more damage, especially because you can Divine Smite on all of them, which is what I was doing here. If there's one thing that this game does very well, it's giving you a lot of opportunities to do a lot of attacks. So when you want to be, you know, doing a lot of attacks and putting down a lot of damage, you're going to need more spell slots. And that's where Sorcerer comes in. So the way that, uh, the way that half spellcasters work in this game is... Every level in a half spellcasting class gives you half a level equivalent of progression as a full spellcaster. So to put it more simply, if I took 12 levels in Paladin, the amount of spells and spell slots I would have would be equal to that of a sixth level spellcaster, so half of it. Uh, so by leveling into a full spe uh, spellcaster like Sorcerer, you are able to get access to a lot more spell slots. So in, in essence, a sixth level Sorcerer and then 6th level on Paladin, which equals 3 full spellcasting levels, makes you a ninth level spellcaster total, which is why I have access to the 5th level slots, the 4th level slots that I have. Uh, now, one of the other things that's good about Sorcerer is you get your Sorcery Points. With Sorcery Points, you can create a spell slot. Now, since I only took 6 levels in Sorcerer instead of 7, um, I don't have enough points to create an extra 5th level slot. I only have enough to create an extra 4th level slot. But what that does is it gives you an extra slot like, unlike Wizard, because Wizard have their Arcane Recovery, so, you know, after combat they can recover spell slots at a slightly better exchange rate than uh, Sorcerers can, but Sorcerers create the spell slot for the day, uh, which is much more useful in my instance. So, that's why it's split 6 and 6. Um, you can also do fifth, like 5 Paladin and 7 Sorcerer if you want. You end up with the same spell slots at the end of the day. Uh, the reason I did 6 and 6 is because of the extra HP that you get for being a Paladin. And because of the aura of protection, which you can get, uh, which is, you know, a paladin ability, which allows you to add your charisma bonus to your saving throws, which makes me a little bit more protected because obviously my AC is pretty good. Uh, but, you know, saving throws not necessarily the best. So by increasing the saving throws with the sixth level paladin, and since you're going to get the same level of spell slots anyway, if you do five and seven of paladin sorcerer, uh, respectively, I'd rather take that over the extra fifth level slot personally. But that's, uh, you know, up to ultimately up to whoever wants to play however they want to play. My AC, so the armor is 20, local protection plus one, Alderaan's favor the helmet plus one, uh, defense is the fighting style that I took with Paladin, for another one to my AC, and then uh, I took the dual wielder feat earlier on because I hadn't originally planned on being a salami slapper, so uh, I could be bothered respec and so I didn't, but it basically just means if, if you have a weapon in both hands, then you get uh, an extra plus one to your AC. It also lets you hold weapons that aren't strictly salamis. Uh, you can hold like Narulna and Bottle of Thunder at the same time, for example, which I was doing before, but the salami slapping was funnier, so I went with that. Uh, so that's those things. Now, to do all the attacks that I was doing, what you're going to want to do is you need this pair of gloves. You, get them at the, you can get them at the start of Act 3. 
gives you martial exertion, which you take a little bit of damage, and in return you get to do an extra attack and you get extra movement on that turn. So what I do is I take at the start of the day an elixir of bloodlust. When you take an elixir of bloodlust, you once you kill something once per turn, and this is this is until a long rest, so you can take it at the start of the day and do it for all your combats. You get an extra action whenever you kill something on a turn. So I'd get an extra action there. I cast haste on myself before combat um, because I obviously took levels of sorcerer, so I can do that. You can also get a wizard to do it too if you wanted to. But I cast haste on myself, so I get an extra action. Um, and then when I get into fight, I summon my my ghouls. They have 20 HP, so I summon them up. I, I go up, I whack them with my offhand salami. I salami slap them. Uh, I put a smite into it because they only have 20 HP, so I can convert one of my slots into extra damage, kill them, get my extra actions. So it's my bonus action gone. I then have three actions because of haste and the bloodlust elixir, uh, meaning that is six attacks, because it's two attacks per action, plus the martial exertion for a seventh attack. And that's how I'm having seven attacks on my turn. Uh, and then obviously applying all the smites to each of those attacks, uh, which if you just go into your reactions tab, you can just turn on it to ask you if you want to use a smite on an attack. So I always turn it on for all of them just so it's always letting me know, but you can even turn it on for crits as well if you want to. So you can just apply it that way. And the reason that Raphael was taking a lot of crits, in fact, the reason that every single one of my attacks was crits is because I cast the spell Hold Monster from my Shut wizard. Hold monster, fifth level spell. It's, it's the same as hold person, but it works on anything except for undead, as opposed to hold person, which only works on humanoids. But um, if they fail the saving throw, they get held, which makes them just paralyzed. So if you're within the five feet or the, the melee, the direct melee range of an enemy, and you can do this ranged attacks as well, but if you're within that really close range, all of your attacks, no matter what you roll, even if it's a one, will hit, and they will all crit. So with this setup going into combat, uh, getting to do seven attacks on one target when they're all going to be crits and I can use all of my smites of the highest level that you wouldn't normally be able to get on Paladin means you can do as much damage with a Salami as you'd like. Uh, so that's how you build a Salami Slapper, as it were. Okay, so what we're going to do, we have our Elixir Bloodlust, so the bonus action Potion of Speed gets the extra action. Uh, we martial exertion for the extra attack. We go up here and we get a kill. We'll be safe with a third level. Really safe with a third level, Jesus. Uh, and then because of our Elixir Bloodlust, we get an extra action. So now we have... Uh, we've used one of those attacks, but you could just say it's the martial exertion. So we have six attacks. So now... We just start some Lamy Slapping. He starts to allow me slapping, baby. Okay. Keep going. Salami slap all the way, baby. Yes! Gorknack, the salami slapper, claims another victim. The salami slapper's on a rampage. <laughs> Let's go, dude. Or hides, he screams at us. Okay, Gorknack. Gonna do a little martial exertion, buddy. Oh, thank God I kept my concentration on my haste because of that. Offhand melee to our ghoul. Just to be safe. Play with a third. Just to be safe. Just to be safe. Just to be safe. Now, we have three actions. Uh, Orin held and Salami to slap. Let's go, buddy. All right. Boom. <laughs> yeah, what do you think of that? The Salami Slapper is here, baby. That's right. That's right. The Salami Slapper is unstoppable, and he's coming after you next. He heard you talking sh I'm making it a crit. Get Salami Slap, mother. The Salami Slapper is unstoppable. I'll have you know. Unstoppable. Have to keep going. Alright. Good turn, Salami Slapper. 
And the best part, we have another full action. And these guys can't be hurt. But they because of sanctuary. But they can be fireballed. Oh, they saved, so they're fine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> I gotta set this up. Alright. Now is now is Gorknack's time to go down in history. Salami Slapper, the baloney brawler, the pepperoni pugilist, the Frankfurt fire. It's his time. The salami slapper. To take out the unbreakable will of the Netherbrain by pure salami alone. That's right. The Salami Slapper is unstoppable. <laughs> Get Salami Slap. Fantastic. Fantastic. But we almost didn't have it. But the Salami Slapper, he reigns true. The Sausage Soldier. The Sausage Slinger. The Glizzy Gobbler. The salami slapper <laughs> holsters his salamis. He actually holstered the salami. Ended 